Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. I'm KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Today I'm bringing out three elements that we've covered individually on the channel over the past year. The ICOM 7300 for the transceiver, the telescoping mass that you see right here over my right shoulder, and the MFJ 2100 Octopus. Now today the Octopus is going to be working three bands, 80, 40, and 20. 40 and 20 will probably be the primary bands we'll use today. And how are we going to do that? We're going to make some contacts. Now, in the first video that I did on the MFJ 2100 Octopus, I was doing a hotels on the air. I was traveling. Right now, during the pandemic, not so much travel. So I'm going to set this up in my uh, on the compound here in the back behind the house and uh, try to make some contacts in a controlled situation. So POTA, you know exactly where somebody's going to be because they actually will publish the frequency and the band that they're going to be on, and in many cases, what time. So that gives us a really good opportunity to say, well, here's where somebody's going to be. Let's see if my setup will actually meet the requirements. Uh, between the radio, the telescoping mast, and the antenna, tuned appropriately for those bands, we should be able to do, or hopefully we'll do, be able to do very well. The other aspect of this is the tuning of the MFJ 2100 Octopus. Now the card that I should put about right here is going to show you how to set it up and so forth. And so I'm not actually going to cover the tuning, but I will show you how the antenna is tuned on the three bands on the MFJ 7300 utilizing the SWR feature on that radio. So let's get out there. Let's start looking for some of those POTA contacts. And if we're lucky, other areas in the United States, and maybe if we're lucky, something outside of the United States as contacts utilizing the MFJ 2100 Octopus. See you in the next segment. Alrighty, so we've got the mass down most of the way. And uh, what I'll do is I'll pan up where you guys can see it. You can see the Octopus antenna and uh, we're using three legs at the moment or three pairs of ham sticks. I've got 80, 40, and 20 currently on the antenna. What I've done is gone ahead and tuned these uh, ham sticks or checked them for their frequencies on the MFJ 269. Now the other thing I wanted to mention, let me come, off the, come down the ladder, is I finally put the mass together correctly. These collars has a portion that fits over the, the larger portion and then the latch actually tightens it on the smaller segment above it. So that is now installed correctly versus the first uh, video that I put out on this uh, mast. And it goes up about uh, 30 feet, a little less than that. And when I have extended, I don't have it up all the way. So, uh, but it uh, gets it up there pretty good. And I've checked the SWR both here on the ground and up in the air just to make sure that everything looks good. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and extend this, show you what that looks like, and then we'll go make some contacts. So I'll be right back. All right, so now we're outside. You can see I've got the uh, mast extended, and uh, we're just going to follow it up. And you'll see the octopus minus a leg. <laughs> up there in the sky. So I've got 80, 40, and 20 connected to the antenna and those will be the frequencies I'll use for now and then we'll show you on the radio making some contacts, uh, POTO and possibly otherwise, here in just a little bit. So just wanted to show you the mast fully extended and uh, now we'll go inside and we'll make some contacts. Okay so for 20 meters, which was the third hamstick we put on the octopus, what we want to see at that height uh, and so forth in the tuning that we've got on those little stingers, where are we on the band? And uh, for 20 meters, we're right here, not quite in the middle, but pretty close. And let's see what we are without any tuning on the radio whatsoever. And I've already set up the 7300 for the test. Let's knock it out. Yes, indeed. So you can see our SWR, just with the hamsticks, where they are, is in quite a good uh, spot. We're below 1.5 from 160 to about 290. 
on the on 14 so uh, great actually without any tuning and that's just the hamsticks where they are so I tune this looks like maybe a little low I could probably actually um, uh, tune it uh, to move it towards 225 but it's so low already that's actually uh, in a good spot now let's tune on some tuning and let's see if it would make a difference so we just ran a little bit of tuning there now let's start the uh, process over there we go and let's run through it one more time nearly identical because it was already very very low so we're in good shape so let's turn tuning off let's try it one more time this is without tuning yeah nearly identical so we won't even worry about tuning on this band with those ham sticks on the octopus let's move to uh, the next segment all right so we're back in now we're looking at 40 meters we're uh, set up at about the the middle of the band at uh, 7.212. You can see to the left on the screen here, we're at uh, 71.52, which would be the low end uh, from this position, and 72.272, um, or 7.272 on the right end. Let's see where the hamsticks come in without any tuning right now on the uh, radio. So we get a nice dip there. You can see we're pretty much tuned those sticks right pretty close to the middle of the band and we're still below three to one as we move to the left and we're certainly below two to one on the right hand side. In fact, if we move over just a little bit, let's bring it to the center of the band and run the test one more time. We'll see a really nice valley here. Indeed, and you can see over on the right hand side 7.290 and we're still below 3 to 1 So the radio can clean this up uh, eh, Can clean this up, let's say but the ham stick itself right where it is is actually in a good spot Let's tune on some tuning and let's see if it makes any difference Not a whole lot here uh, because the ham stick was already at a low uh, low point on the band. Now, if I were to move to left or to the right, the tuning would actually do more. Uh, in fact, let's just say for fun, I was trying to make a POTA activation, but it was up around 260. So let's move to, well, let's say 280 actually, because I just had uh, a POTA activation there not too long. Now, we're actually at about well, just a little above two to one. If you if you can look closely at the screen, there's a little arrow, a little orange arrow right below the second from the right bar there from 7.290. Now, let's actually do the tuning. There we go. And uh, turn it back on. And let's see if we were able to bring that down. Typically, the way these radios work is anything below three, it can tune it. And remember, the hamstick was actually in a pretty good spot without any tuning, but let's say I move to the right a little bit. I want to bring that SDR, make the radio feel better about the SDR, SWR uh, in this case. So, yeah, see, now our dip is right there at 280. That's where we would want it, let's say, if we were doing a POTA activation, but the hamstick's not exactly where I need it. But you can see the octopus, even with the hamstick, would make this easy because I was already below three at that point. I just want to make the radio feel better about it. So we're in a good spot. Now, let's go back without tuning. This is where it would be. You can see it's on its way back up, and that's the hamstick in its plain uh, tune self. And again, if I wanted to bring it down and adjust it to that length, I can. But typically, you'll try to uh, tune these ham sticks right in the middle and then have your radio help you on either the left or the right side on the SWR. Let's go take a look at 80 meters, the last ham stick on the antenna. Okay, so now what we've done is we've brought up 80 meters and specifically we're at 3.700. 3.700 is on the left hand side of the band, if you will. And uh, 80 meters is so wide, and with ham sticks in particular, uh, and many antennas other than, say, a dipole, you're going to have a hard time tuning across the entire band, uh, almost impossible. A uh, dipole, I can get really, really close, uh, especially the dipole that I've got strung up here that I built, but I took my time. But this is a ham stick with, a, with the, uh, the loading coil on one end, and you're going to get a dip, but it's going to be very pronounced, and it's going to be extremely precise. Let's take a look at it and see what it is here. Indeed, you can see, let me finish it out. You can see that uh, the low point there, let's uh, move our arrow over to there. Our low point is about at 360. 
right about 3.60. If I was trying to make the contact down there, that'd be, that'd be great. But in this particular case, let's say the contact's up around 3.7. Well, if we come back to 3.7, you can see that the SWR is at least 3, probably higher than 3 to 1. Let's see if we can tune that. It may not actually tune. All right, tried. Let's turn it on, and let's see at 3.7 if we can make it work. So it did, it did drop it down to pretty close to 3.7. Now, I can go just to the left, about right there, 3.86, and I can go just to the right at about 7.09, 7.10 on either side, and I'd be okay, but you can tell I, it's going to be a struggle. I'm going to have to tune it uh, if I want to go anywhere outside where the hamstick itself is tuned. So sometimes you got to play with this. The octopus gives me the, the opportunity to switch bands quickly, but I may actually have to tune towards the middle of the band in some instances or tune where I think most of the action is going to be. Let the radio do the rest of the tuning uh, and, uh, and see if we can make that contact on POTA. So in the next couple of two or three segments, we'll see how many I can make. We'll make some of those POTA activations. Typically, they're in the 40 to 20 meters uh, and uh, with or without tuning in some cases. And we'll see if this octopus can actually uh, uh, do well at the height that we have it on the uh, mast and with the tuning that we have on the ham sticks themselves. Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo Delta Papa. Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo Delta Papa, you're just down in the noise, about a 3-5 southeastern Kentucky. Roger, Roger, QSL, and uh, can you give me back my call sign one more time? Negative, negative. Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo Delta Papa. Uh, somebody double with you. Kilo Yankee 4, one more time, please. Roger, Roger. Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo Delta Papa. Bravo, Bravo. Seventy threes, thanks for your patience. QIZ, Whiskey Zero, Yankee Golf Hotel. Kilo Yankee Four, Bravo Delta Papa. Kilo Yankee Four, Bravo Golf Papa, five nine into Missouri. Negative, negative. Kilo Yankee Four, Bravo Delta Papa. Yankee 4, Bravo Delta Papa, you're 5-9 into Missouri. Roger, Roger, you're about a 5-7 into southeastern Kentucky. Thanks for the activation. Okay, copy 5-7 into Kentucky. Thank you very much for 73. 73, have a great day. Okay, 73, thank you, Kilo Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo Delta Papa. Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo Delta Papa. Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo Delta Papa. Kilo Yankee 4, Kilo Yankee 4. Kilo Yankee 4, Kilo Yankee 4. Okay, Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo Delta Papa, is correct? 
Roger, Roger, QSL. Okay, three by five, three by five. Thank you. Seventy threes, you're five nine plus. All right, so to wrap up the video, let's go over some of the things that we accomplished today, and it was quite a lot actually. In video number one, we showed you the setup and the tuning of the MFJ 2100 Octopus antenna and uh, wasn't able to really make a lot of contacts that video. And so it's been, uh, an, we really needed to make a, a part two on this antenna. So we took out the hub again, the MFJ 2100 Octopus hub, installed three hamsticks, 80, 40 and 20 and we made contacts on 40 and 20 utilizing POTA activations primarily but if you noticed I did make that one contact down in Puerto Rico uh, and he came back to me and said I was a 3-5 about the only way you can make a contact is if you're wearing a headset uh, to be able to hear me at a 3-5 but all the way up in Kentucky all the way down to Puerto Rico uh, on an MFJ 2100 octopus uh, you got a chance to see the mast with a few updates uh, installed correctly, but getting that antenna up in the air is a key, especially where I have it placed right now. It is surrounded uh, by mountains and my house, so getting it up in the air gives it an opportunity to make those contacts. Uh, in addition, we use the ICOM 7300 to help with some of the SWR, but if those hamsticks are tuned correctly, either in the portion of the band that you're interested in or with a little help with uh, the tuning on the, uh, on the ICOM 7300, you can get that SWR down where it's safe and manageable. So a lot of fun. The great thing about POTA activations is you know where they're gonna be. So if you need to test out your equipment, this is a great way to do that. Uh, and we'll be doing other antennas in the future. I'm KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. I hope you like this part two of the MFJ 2100 Octopus Antenna, and we'll see you down the road. 73s.